Good morning and welcome to our Social Media Corner. My name is Diana and I'm the Social Media Manager at AIA. We are live from beautiful Vienna, our headquarters, and there's a lot going on here this week. Our general conference started yesterday and it will go on until the end of the week. And our scientific forum is also happening today and tomorrow. And this year our scientific forum is all about the much needed transition to clean energy. As the world's population and economy keep growing, so does the demand for clean and greener energy. However, climate change has been telling us for many years that we need greener and cleaner solutions. And that without nuclear, that might not be possible. Follow hashtag Atmos for Climate to stay on top of the discussions happening here in the next couple of days. And to be part of the conversation. We will be speaking to several guests, but now I'm very pleased to introduce you to our very first guest, our Director General, Rafael Grossi. Welcome, Director General, to our Social Media Corner. Hello, Diana. Good morning. It's good, good morning. to be here. It's nice to have you here. Thank you. So can you tell our followers what to expect for, from this scientific forum? Well, you know, the scientific forum has traditionally been uh, an important event on the sides of the general conference where some important topical issue is discussed from a different perspective. And, and we thought that uh, this year we could use this opportunity to put the um, emphasis and to focus more on something which is uh, increasingly important as uh, the transition to clean energy. We are in between um, two uh, important conferences on climate change. Last year we had one in, in Madrid and, and next year, it should have been this year because of the pandemic, it has been postponed. We are going to have a conference in Glasgow uh, next year on climate change and um, we will be present the IAEA will be present, and more than the IAEA, uh, more importantly, nuclear energy, the role of nuclear energy. So I see this opportunity here in Vienna uh, as, a, as a good one to have people, uh, we have uh, political representatives here, but at the same time, in the very unique way the IAEA provides, it's an it's a, a intersection between political people and technical people and scientists. So we are uh, having, uh, giving ourselves this opportunity to have this conversation here in Vienna, how we see things now, and uh, hopefully to uh, educate, to um, uh, provide more information, and also to uh, contribute in a better way to the societal uh, understanding of uh, what's at stake or what, what nuclear energy can do. Mm -hmm. about the problems we have. Thank you. For the climate goals to be met by 2050, 90% of uh, all the electricity will need to come from low ca carbon sources. Um, do you think there's a success formula to, uh, to achieve this? What is the role played by, by nuclear? Well, uh, I've been saying something which I will repeat at the scientific forum, and that is very simple. Nuclear has a place at the table. Of course, uh, we live in free economies, where there's no magic hand or no central planner uh, indicating what uh, is the exact amount within the recipe of different forms of energy. What we can do is from a scientific, technical and also empiric um, perspective uh, indicate uh, what are the advantages, what nuclear energy is doing now, already now. It's not a theory, it's not a model, it's what nuclear energy is doing now. Um, so that when the policy discussions, political discussions, uh, take place in different parts of the world, including in centers where um, financing uh, is discussed, then the, there is a dispassionate, I would say, approach to these issues, and nuclear is considered at par uh, with others. Definitely, nuclear has a place at the table. It should have even more. And the, uh, what do you think are the main, what do you foresee as the main challenges for this transition to clean energy to, to happen? Well, there are a number of, uh, of issues. I don't know if I, I would call them challenges. I think uh, the, the first thing for uh, nuclear to be uh, considered uh, more 
by, by newly acceding countries is the issue of financing, of course, because uh, nuclear energy, like any other um, endeavor f of big proportion, uh, sometimes uh, requires capital, and that requires financing, financing sorry, and that may require credits and loans and, and this type of activity. And in some cases, we've seen precisely non-technical, non-economical factors coming at play. So what we want to do is to provide rational arguments that may facilitate this discussion. So when financial uh, conditions are easier, then I believe it will be, again, um, a more accessible uh, solution for many countries. Then there are um, scientific, uh, innovative technologies uh, coming at play, uh, making it or providing, I would say, from the menu of uh, technological solutions that come with nuclear energy, providing also uh, easier to access uh, technologies to uh, middle countries or to countries that might not be able to embark in uh, bigger projects. And here I have in mind small and medium-sized reactors, uh, scalable reactors, modular reactors that can uh, provide uh, uh, nuclear energy at, if I may put it so colloquially, at affordable price. Mm -hmm. And um, what can the agency do, or it's already doing, to, to help countries in this transition to, to clean energy? Well, first of all, we are providing them with uh, information, with capacity building, with the ability that they may otherwise find a bit um, difficult to um, have uh, technical advice. In some cases, countries are approached by vendors, um, um, offers can be complex to discern. Uh, so what we are in a certain sense is the member state consultant. We don't have a commercial uh, interest our interest is everybody's benefit. So uh, we are a, an increasingly valued uh, interlocutor for our member states who come to us after listening uh, to many people coming to them and offering things. They come to us for a sober, calm analysis on what it's on offer and what may be best uh, for their particularities or the peculiarities of their market. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And um, how do you feel about this transition? Are you optimistic? Do you oh, see it happening in many countries? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think what one sees uh, is that more and more countries uh, in Latin America, where we come from, in um, Asia, in Africa, in the Gulf, this would have been incredible to believe that countries uh, flooded in uh, oil and, and gas would be looking at nuclear, but this is exactly what they are doing, and this is for a reason. So uh, I believe that what what lies ahead is is uh, is, is is very positive. At the same time, um, the IAEA sees this uh, as uh, a great responsibility for us, because we are the ones, precisely because of what I was saying. Now we do not look at this from a commercial perspective. We look at this from a um, scientific, technical, non-proliferation uh, angle. We want to make sure that all of these projects will only bring benefits. And so uh, we are the global hub for all these things. So I take this uh, with, uh, with a great sense of responsibility, I would say. Mm -hmm. DG? I know that you need to go to the opening of the scientific yes. forum that is, it is about to start. So thank you so much for joining thank us you. for this short but very insightful conversation. We wish you good luck and very nice discussions during the scientific forum this year. Thank you. Thank I'm you. looking forward to it. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Now, as I just say, our scientific forum on nuclear power and the transition to clean energy is about to start. Follow hashtag Atoms for Climate to stay on top of the discussions and to be part of the conversation. We will come back tomorrow with more interviews. So see you tomorrow and stay on top of the conversation with hashtag Atoms for Climate. See you. Thank you. <laughs>